Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Welcome to Arrow's Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Dr. Martha Tara Lee. I'm a clinical sexologist, and my company is called Arrow's Coaching. That's E-R-O-S coaching.com. Today's show is going to be about cyber infidelity, the new seduction. And we'll be chatting with Dr. Mar- Malini. Weserman, and she's the founder of the Dr. Eve brand, which is a household name in South Africa and beyond. She has just released her latest book, Cyber Infidelity, The New Seduction. Utilizing the database of Ashley Madison, the world's largest dating site for married people, Malini will be bringing to us cutting-edge findings on what is cyber infidelity, why people commit it, and how women behave online and she'll be discussing the future of sex tech's role in relationships that's sex technology so we will be considering the current use of technology and the impact it has had on your significant relationship so a little bit more about dr malini she is uh, uh, an internationally accredited couple and sex therapist a clinician in private practice, couple and sex therapist, clinical sexologist, sexual medicine therapist, sexual rights activist, and founder of the Dr. Eve's brand. Dr. Malini Wesermans is a woman, a parent, and a partner. She's passionate about living life in a healthy, sensual, and responsible way. She is the author of the best selling book, Pillow Talk, Pillow, Pillow. Hang on, let me check. Pillow book, uh, Dr. Eve sex book, a guide for young people and aging and sexuality. So cyber infidelity would be her fourth book. So let's welcome um, Dr. Marlene Weserman. Hi, how are you doing? Great. So I'm so glad you made it to the show. I know you are really busy with uh, all your travels and your book tour. Tell us more about uh, your plans with your book. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, The book came out in South African stores about a month ago, and we decided to start the launches now because our holidays, our winter holidays are just done in South Africa. So tomorrow I am going off to Johannesburg for my first book launch. Um, And then I do a few here in Cape Town and back to Johannesburg to do some more. And then we'll start doing international touring with the book with Ashley Madison to promote the book and mostly to promote the work, actually, Martha, because the work is is so new um, to us clinicians as well as to the public. So it's very exciting. And anyone who wants to know where I am, uh, please get onto my website, which is marlenewasserman.com. Mm-hmm. And you can have a look mm-hmm. and see lots of events, lots of media, lots of information that's happening and telling you where I am and really what the book's about and how to get hold of it. Mm. So will you be touring mm. the, so US as well? the US Yes, I plan to come to New York and to the West Coast, but definitely to New York, Toronto, Australia and London. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. I so- Tell me, it's sorry. It's, it's important to, to be able to have these conversations throughout the world, which is why I'm really excited to talk with you. Oh, yes, extremely. I'm so excited because I think this is the first time somebody is coming onto the show to launch her new book. Well, thank you. This <laughs> is <special> for me. <laughs> so what actually led you to do this research? I actually just read your book, uh, a few hours ago and um, the story inside but I thought it's just more interesting if listeners uh, hear what led you to start doing research into cyber infidelity sure three years ago Ashley Madison um, was brought into South Africa as you said in your intro it's the largest dating site for married people in the world it has 35 million people uh, as who are signed up 
in 46 different countries in the world. So they launched in South Africa three years ago, and I was really opposed to it. Didn't know much about them, but just the very idea of their byline, which is life is short, have an affair, it felt for me like they were promoting infidelity, and that meant multiple partners. And living in South Africa, we have a very high HIV AIDS rate. And I thought it can only be doing bad things if they're going to be encouraging people to have more than one partner. And I was quite vociferous and outspoken and opposed to them coming to this country. And then as a clinician, and you understand this because you're a clinician, yeah, I started yeah. getting people into my therapy room, and specifically women, mm. who were saying to me, you know, I'm on this dating site called Ashley Madison, and I'm so happy, and I'm having fun, and I'm kind of confused because I'm not really sure if I'm cheating all I know is that it's making me feel happier and I'm having better sex in my marriage and I don't want to leave my husband. I'm just feeling really happy and I'm meeting such great men and I'm meeting women and I'm having a good time. Mm. So I started writing blogs about it and thinking about it and talking about it on my radio shows and suddenly Noel uh, came back to me, Noel Biederman, who's the founder and the CEO of Ashley Madison, and he said, I think we can do some work together. And we spoke and spoke, and I said to him, you know, this is, this is really fascinating for me. I'm wanting to understand this concept of cyber cheating or online behavior. And we, we did an exchange where he gave me the access, the absolute full access to his database. And he said, go and do the research. Share it with us. Do what you want with it. I said, I want to write a book. And so it happened. Three years later, here I am with the book. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so you did some research, like a survey with the population as well, right? Absolutely. I did three arms of, I had three arms of research. The one, uh, one thing that I did straight away was I created a, a, a website where people could post their cyber secrets because mm. I wanted to be able to gather qualitative information, their narratives. And all of that's in the book. All the stories that people posted are in the book. And then I did quantitative research where I created five surveys and I put them into Ashley Madison. I administered them into Ashley Madison. I had a total of 62,600 people, men and women, mostly married, mostly heterosexual, who responded to my surveys. And that formed the bones of my book. I then also, mm -hmm. my third arm of research was I had a lived experience where I posted a profile and for two years I lived as a single woman and as a married man on Ashley Madison and engaged fully in cyber infidelity. Yeah. Yeah. And all of you will be able to read all about this in her book. Yeah. It's really fascinating. I liked how you were able to use the st stories that you collected and then you added your own points to each of them. It really brought, brought a lot of color and it really illuminated the lives of these people and what you actually thought about different situations as well. I, I'm so pleased that you found it interesting. Uh, the book's produced in a beautiful way as mm -hmm. if you're online and reading your mobile device, which is where all of us live and where the possibility of infidelity happens without us even being aware of it. You know, I kept having absolutely breathless moments as the research results kept coming in and as I was living online. I you know, was absolutely unbelieving that people were living in this way now, that we are living in this way, where we are living differently online to how we do in real life. And mostly, I was started getting in couples who kept coming in mm. to my therapy room uh, because I was now putting myself out into the country as somebody who works in cyber infidelity. And I got couple after couple, week after week, day after day, talking about their pain, their gain around cyber infidelity. And that's really where I learned the most. Because as you know, we don't have any clinical interventions to manage cyber infidelity. Yet. There's nothing, there's no empirical evidence around it. So I kind of had to learn as I was going along with my couples. Um, and part of what I'm going to be doing is doing webinars and training of clinicians like you around how to manage cyber infidelity in your therapy rooms. Great. I'm Great. really looking forward to it. I liked how at the end of every chapter or so, you would have a kind of like a checklist of guidelines, uh, mm -hmm. of, of new rules of uh, navigating this world of the cyber infidelity dating kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, 
it's essential for us, that was my conclusion, to really be able to contract with our partners about what makes up cyber infidelity. The, the definition is really unclear. So what one person considers to be cyber flirting, the other person considers to be just chatting. And there's a huge amount of confusion around that. And going through the book and checklisting yourself gives you an opportunity to really understand what the whole concept of cyber infidelity is. And couples can then create contracts. And I think we should talk about that next. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So this was... Uh this has been uh, Dr. Marlini Weserman, and you can find her on her website, which is marliniweserman.com. And she is a reputable international uh, clinical sexologist who does so much fantastic work, and she's been doing this work for more than 35 years. So I'm very glad to have her with us today talking about cyber infidelity, the new seduction. After this break, we'll be exploring more about her primary findings from her book and what advice she has for us in navigating technology in our primary relationships. We'll be talking more about monogamy, sexual infidelity, uh, fidelity, and commitment. So stay tuned to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets. And this is Dr. Martha Tara Lee of Eros Coaching. So... Stay tuned and you will be able to learn more about this with us after this break. So the break will be coming up very soon. And you can find her on Twitter as well. That's Dr. Weserman. of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, intuitive life coach and energy healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. This is Dr. Mata Tara Lee with Dr. Malini Weserman, and she will be talking about sex- cyber infidelity, the new seduction, and it is also the title of her new book today on this show. And let's talk a little bit more about Dr. Malini. 21 years ago, she created the Dr. Eve brand, which is a household name for a very, with a very strong media and public presence in South Africa. Every day, she contributes to public interest magazines, radio, radio stations, television shows, and newspapers. She's now entered her 21st year 
on radio and television, and she has at least one weekly show for the past 21 years. Presently, she has her own weekly live phone in radio show on two different radio stations and appears regularly on television. She has received many awards and much recognition from the media in South Africa. In 2012, the Dr. Eve show won the prestigious MT. And radio award for the best nighttime radio show. So I'm very, very happy to have uh, Dr. Marlini Weserman, who is sharing with us about her book. You can find out more about her by going to her website. That's Dr. That's Marlini Weserman.com. That's M A R L E N E W A S S E R M A N.com. So welcome back to the show. Thank you. Nice to be back with you, Martha. <laughs> so uh, please uh, share with us uh, more about your primary fa- findings, about uh, f- what you have uh, learned from doing this extensive study that you have over the last three years. I think the most surprising study would be, uh, points that came out of the study for me was the behavior of women online. Um, you know, we know that, that women offline in real life continue to be rather reticent about exploring, exposing their sexuality or their sexual interest because reputation still matters and there is a hesitation around asking for what they want because there are risk factors involved and just merely expressing what their sexual desires are. Well, women own the online space for sure. I found that women are predatory with me as a man. I found that and certainly in my survey results, Women are not shy about why they're on Ashley Madison or on dating sites or online, Twitter or Facebook. They are looking to have sex and not just sex. They're wanting to have satisfying and exciting sex. And that's their primary motivation for being on a dating site like Ashley Madison. And that was really surprising for me. I found that women are like that because it really is, one considers it, online space is completely unregulated and it has no rules. And there's nobody who can be slut shaming them or spoiling their reputation. So they are really expressing themselves in a very intimate and very personal way, very directly around the kind of sex they want. I found that when I was there as a man, women would be approaching me and say, we want to have sex. We want to see what you look like. And only once we see what we look like, will we arrange to have a hookup with you. So average woman, and my study was in five countries, which was South Africa, the UK, USA, Canada, and Australia, mm-hmm. and consistently mm-hmm. across all those countries, the women went offline from the time of first chat to the time of meeting was between four and 16 days. They chatted, and they immediately wanted to hook up and see what this person looked like and have sex. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was kind of radical for me and really exciting to see that women are claiming themselves online in in a much more aggressive way than they do in the real world. Yeah. Yeah. So what's interesting is uh, it's contrary to what a lot of people believe, which is women just want to chat or have a relationship. These people that you're finding through your study is really wanting to take it offline and they're looking specifically for sex. Absolutely, but not just sex. They want to have exciting sex. They want to have satisfying sex. And also they're curious uh, and it's, you know, the basis of what cyber infidelity is, is that people chat synchronistically. So you've got two people in real time sharing fantasy and imagination. And the most important thing is that they are violating their basic traditional beliefs around what marriage or relationship is about, which is monogamy and sexual fidelity and commitment. And they're doing it in real time. And that's the excitement of it. Now, what makes us such a very almost spiritual, and I'm going to bring in the element of spirituality here, yeah. yeah, to it, is that, we, which was another really interesting and unexpected finding for me, is that the online space allows people to be way more intimate than your in real life relationship. So men and women alike were saying that they disclose more online, whether it's sexual fantasies, but emotional needs, emotional disclosures, than they do to their in real life partner. So being in the space feels like they're not having the traditional sex, which is exchanges of body fluids and real tactile sensations. They're having an experience of sex, which is almost spiritual. And the fact that there is no physicality involved in it 
Mm. It's a discussion, mm. it's conversation, it's through the written language, and it takes people to heightened experiences of pleasure that they don't experience in real life sex. And that was really, really fascinating for me. Yeah, extremely. I liked how in your book you mentioned certain new terms uh, to me, such as the ability of the internet to have this uh, this inhibition effect. And you use also the term hyper-personal communication. I think this really describes how one feels when they really get sucked into this uh, world of uh, spider cyberspace. Indeed. Indeed, absolutely. Those things definitely stood out for me. The sense of the, the term hyperpersonal, I didn't coin that, but that's what I found in the research, was it becomes a space where, because of the technology, because cyber infidelity exists because of technology and mostly with mobile devices, because of the existence of technology, the AAA engine kicks in. And the AAA engine was created, the term was created by Al Cooper, who spoke about an affordability, the anonymity and the accessibility of what technology brings us. So in that space, which is very private, very personal, people feel that they're different. And because they feel private and different, they go into a very intimate space with themselves and with the other person. It feels safer for them than talking to their real life partner, where there may be criticism or conflict or differences or disagreement. And because the space is so very positive and pleasing, they share emotions and sexuality that they wouldn't normally share. And thus the communication is very different. And I found that was another real, really incredibly in in interesting part of my research is looking at how communication is so different online to how it is in real life. So you st studied primarily the populations in Ashley Madison, South Africa, USA, Australia, and Canada. How about uh, Asia? Uh, we didn't get there yet. Ashley Madison is, uh, does not have a, they do have, they, they don't actually have Singapore. I don't think they have Singapore as a country. Yeah. But they do, yeah. they don't have great strength in um in Asian countries yet. That's next. That's going to come next. I'll do that with you, Martha. Yeah. We'll okay. have some yeah. research of yeah, I, I know that Ashley Madison is banned in Singapore and South Korea. I just did a search and apparently it has 1 million people in Japan. So yeah. it is very popular in Japan, apparently. Yeah. So that, that might be an ongoing study for you to study yeah. how this evolves. Absolutely. It's, it's absolutely for me. It's just the beginning of a conversation which I want to take out into the world so that people can understand that what they're doing online might actually be incredibly harmful to the relationship, but also also what what's interesting me now where I've taken myself and my interest is looking at alternate forms of relationship mm -hmm. because the book has taught me or the research has taught me that cyber infidelity is a new form of, of relationship. All of my respondents across all ages from 18 to 55 plus in all the five countries say that they don't want to get divorced that they really want to be married and they're emotionally and sexually satisfied enough. But this has become another form of relationship that they want to integrate into their, la their lives, their significant relationship lives. And the world is kind of bursting right now with new forms of relationships. We've got polyamory, hookups, friends with benefits, monogamish, swinging, um, ethical cheating, consensual non-monogamy. We have all of these very interesting new forms of relationship that I'm now very interested in. And my my interest obviously is specifically around cyber infidelity as a way that people are forming connections and attachments without the traditional norms of commitment and monogamy and sexual fidelity. So it's very interesting right now what's going on in the world. And, and I'm, I'm really talking at, um, I'm going to be talking at an international conference in September about this. Mm, yeah, I'm very mm, yeah. excited and happy for you that you have this opportunity to have access to their database and be able to write this book because this is really cutting edge. A lot of people know people who are involved in some form or another in cyber relationships. I know a lot of my friends who are on Tinder and OkCupid looking for someone because they are just too busy to date in the traditional way. So if they are in unsatisfying relationships, the transition from there into a site like Ashley Medicine when they are married is not really that far-fetched. 
well, you know, most people are cheating on Facebook. That's what the research shows. And also about 40% of people on regular dating sites are married. So there's a lot of deception and heartache that's happening. You know, Ashley Madison just very transparent about what they do. Mm. But mm. what I write about is the progression, how we, we progressively go down that, that rabbit hole, as I keep calling it, without even being aware of it. I, you know, I'll give you a, 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 an example after we come back from the, the break of how easy it is to move from just a regular chat with somebody into what your partner would consider to be cyber infidelity. Fantastic. Fantastic. So thanks for this. After the break, we will be talking more about cyber infidelity and the rabbit hole. You can find out more about Malini's book by going to her website. That's um, maliniwezerman.com. You can buy her book, watch her video blogs and join the chat on Facebook and Twitter that will keep you updated about your intimate life online. And be sure to stay tuned to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets. And we're talking about cyber infidelity today. This is an exciting new subject that we are bringing onto the show because this is really where things are starting to evolve in the modern day world. So stay tuned to Arrow's Evolution. This is where we're talking about today, technology and the impact it has with your significant relationship. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. 
Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. We have with us Dr. Malini Wesserman, who is talking about her new book, Cyber Infidelity, The New Seduction. And just now, during the show, she has already explained more about how she started being fascinated with the website Ashley Madison and she will had access to the database and started her three-year study of understanding what it really means to navigate this new paradigm of dating for married people and of course the world that we live in is very different now with the hookup culture and so she's able to explain to us that women are actually the predator and they are just as active in seeking out relationships and connections online. It's quite surprising uh, when it comes to uh, female sexual behavior. So now we're going to start exploring more about uh, what she was talking about going down the rabbit hole, how we um, people who, who start going online, they actually get sucked down this path. So uh, tell us more about this, Dr. Malini. Martha, what I want to do is to read to you an email that I recently received that I think absolutely perfectly describes this rabbit hole situation. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. um, from a woman. She says she's been married for seven years. She saw a Facebook conversation between a husband and an ex-girlfriend of his. She says they've known each other for many years and they went to school together. And I'm going to read you. She sends me the script of the, the message and you will see how quickly things turn around from a regular chat into what she considered and defined as cyber infidelity. Her husband says, hello there, how are you doing? She says, hey stranger, good in yourself. He says, well thank you, sorry I've been out of touch, life has been hectic and time flies. Nevertheless, we always end up at the beginning. How's all with you? She says, all good man, lots of hectic stuff happened since the last time we spoke. Always at the beginning, hey? Anyway, really good to hear from you. P.S. changed my cell phone number. He says, we'll call you sometime. Please give it to me. She says, will be awesome to hear from you. He says, you're making me blush. Can I call you in 15 minutes? She says, you can call me anytime. He says, just as I thought, I'm afraid of seeing you. Love, I will be in touch, sunshine. She says, Lol, I won't bite. You take care. He says, I might want you to. Lol. She says, naughty, naughty. Lol. But seriously, I'd like to meet with you. He says, yes, we will soon. Go home safely. Chat soon. Can you hear, Martha, how quickly it went from a cordial exchange of just niceties Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. suddenly... It became intimate, it became personal, it became sexual. The wife read this and she says, this has really hurt me and I want to know, is this harmless to my marriage? Am I overreacting? And if I decide to leave him, will I be justified in doing this? So it's confusing. People are not sure if this is just flirting fun, if this is allowed, or if this is really something which is unfaithful, breaking the vows that we have ascribed to once we get married or commit to a significant relationship. And then the pain begins. It's very, very difficult for people to come across this. Now, if you look at the cover of my book, the byline of it is, it's not that I'm having sex or anything. It's not cheating. It's emotional cheating, she says. So the byline is, it's not that I'm having sex or anything. And that came to me with one of my clients. We had his wife crying, and I think you read about that in the book. And she was saying, you've had an affair, you've had an affair. And he was like confused, and I was confused. And she, she said, he said, but I never met her. I don't understand why you're getting so upset about this. Mm-hmm. And she said, but you've had, you've, had, you've had a relationship with another woman. And he said, I've just been chatting online. And when we began to deconstruct it, it absolutely was an affair. It had mm. all the ingredients mm. of what makes up a regular in real life affair, but it had the added dimension of it happening on technology and with all the other elements that cause enormous amount of pain when they get caught out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people don't really understand what her emotional fidelity means 
of fidelity and uh, or sexual, <laughs> and it's it's confusing to people because nobody really educates them on such things, and so they do get sucked into it very quickly, like you said. Yeah, and you can just hear how that just happened in a heartbeat in one sentence. It was going just from, as I said, social niceties. And then she did something very personal. She gave him her telephone number, which was seen by him as an invitation to take her further. Let's have something private. Now, remember, we're on our phones and that's technology and it's private. Mm -hmm. So the wife can't see what's going on. In the old days or in real life infidelity, you've got the secretary or your best friend's wife and nobody sees. And it's, it's kept in a very private hotel room. But here, you've got your device with you 24-7. You are lying in bed with your partner. You're on a video game that's got a chat room with it, and you're having cyber sex with somebody while you're in bed with your wife, with your husband. Mm. So how do you take that away? You know, How do you manage that? Mm. When you think you're just having fun and you're having better sex with your partner, but actually when your partner finds out, they are really upset because they say that's cheating. You're sharing emotions with this person. You're sharing your body with this person. You're sending pictures with this person. You're watching pornography, which is part of cyber infidelity. And I feel incredibly, incredibly wounded that you have been unfaithful to me. You've broken our vows. So this is when people come in and uh, work things out with you. What are some of the steps perhaps you take them through? Do you explain to them the definition of uh, fidelity? So what I do with them is go through the regular stages of um, treating or managing infidelity, which is just going through the crisis, as you would know as a clinician, and managing that crisis. But here it has the added element of both people. I will say to the one person, um, do you feel that you have committed infidelity online? And he will say, no, 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 not at all. All I was doing was just making a joke. It was just kind of flirtatious. I'm not interested in her. I don't find her attractive. In fact, I've never seen her. I've only seen pictures of her. And the wife's saying, but you're using words that only you use with me. You call her sweetheart or you call her love. And those are words just for me, but you're using them with this person who you don't know. Mm -hmm. So the added dimensions of cyber infidelity are that you find out that your person has, your person has betrayed you just like in regular fidelity, so you feel excluded and incredibly pained and incredibly, incredibly humiliated, all those things. And then you get to read the stories. You get to read the messages and see the pictures that have been sent up and down. Mm -hmm. And that causes yeah. you enormous pain because yeah. you also then yeah. seen a side of your partner that you didn't know existed. It could be a sexual side of them. It could be an emotional side of them. And you feel trebly wounded. So there are three layers of pain here that you feel betrayed, humiliated, you're reading the real life world of these people and suddenly he becomes a stranger to you or she's a stranger to you and you are actually seeing a side that they have never or no longer expressed to you and that's incredibly, incredibly painful. Yeah, yeah. one of the things that I, I found very interesting from your book is that uh, from from the, the surveys, that you had, women seem to be going online looking for um, uh, sex because they are curious or they are bored in their relationships and men are actually going online seeking uh, sex because they want more variety. They're not necessarily yeah. unhappy, they just want more variety. Absolutely. What was surprising about women, because we've been stereotyped as women into saying we want relationships before we'll have sex. Right? I mean, that's standard throughout the world. It's universal. Women want to have a relationship and then they feel comfortable that they're allowed to have sex because they won't get the bad reputation. That was the days before cyber infidelity, the days before hookups and friends with benefits was going on. Um, and yet, you know, online, women unashamedly are saying, not only, as I said, they want satisfying sex, but they don't want to have an emotional relationship with you. They don't. They just want to chat with you. They want to kind of have this, this added layer of excitement. They want to masturbate with you, but they definitely do not want to have leave their husbands and go off into the sunset with you. And they're really willing to go and meet you offline and book into a hotel and have a hookup with you and go back online and go home to their husband. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this comes back to the pain that is involved. Uh, uh, you know, the reasons why um, the men, uh, they 
get involved sometimes is because you mentioned in the book they want acknowledgement and they want some kind of self enhancement. It's almost as if they are also suffering in the relationship. Maybe they are not getting enough sex, or maybe they are not getting the kind of affirmation、uh, that they need in their relationship. You think? Well, what these men were saying was that they are definitely wanting more sex than what they get in their relationship, and I think that's kind of a standard mantra of all men. Um, but they were not also wanting to leave their relationships. They really believed that the relationships were good enough for them emotionally and sexually. They wouldn't leave because they weren't getting enough sex.、Um, but what was was interesting for me was the survey that I did, looking at the kind of sex that people were having differently online to what they were having in their real life relationship. And I found that really, really fascinating. And we'll we'll talk about that after the break, looking at the differences between the kind of sex that you have online as compared to the sex that you're having. With your online lover compared to the sex that you have in your in real life lover,、mm-hmm. so we'll compare so, more about online and real sex after this break. Also, in uh, uh, Dr. Malini's Wasserman's book, she talks significantly about the role of porn and how this has changed our relationships and also our brain's connection to intimacy. So, during this show so far, we've explored how.、Uh, Behind a screen,、uh, the connection can also feel very spiritual and emotional, and this actually causes the person to feel intimate in a way that they may not be getting in their personal relationships. So this is a very interesting topic that we're exploring on Arrow's Evolution today. And remember to check out Dr. Malini's Wasserman's book,、uh, Cyber Infidelity: The New Seduction. Conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, sea edging technology, space. Wellness, health, love, lust, and passion—all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living, where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at three Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media. One of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM.
Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. Today we're talking about cyber infidelity, and we have with us the author of the new book, Cyber Infidelity, The New Seduction, that's Dr. Malini Wesemann. She hosts her own websites and writes all her own content, and you'll be able to find some of her work on dreve.co. This is a forum that offers the public education, information, counselling and interaction. She also has a store called Dr. Eve Shop. Dot co dot za, offering visitors an opportunity to learn about and to purchase sexual health products. Uh, she has a very strong daily presence with many followers on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. After all, she has been a contributor to every magazine, newspaper and major website for over 21 years and a blogger for the, late, the largest online site for women in South Africa. That's women21.com. So you want to check out Dr. Uh, Malini's Wesemann's uh, work and also check out her other website, which is the main one that we are promoting on today's show, which is MaliniWeserman.com Just before a break, we were talking about uh, the rabbit hole and right now we want to talk a little bit more about online and uh, real sex. What's the differences? So, uh, talk to Malini. Yeah, Arthur. This was one of the surveys that I asked people to tell me what they were doing online as compared to what they were doing offline. Um, and it was it was compelling to see to say the least. Uh, offline with the with the online lovers, in other words, when they would meet up afterwards, mm-hmm. and hook up with mm-hmm. each other in hotel rooms or their own rooms or their, their partners wherever they were. The the most that they were wanting and the most kind of sexual activity they were looking for were hugs and cuddles. I mean, isn't that completely <laughs> fascinating? Which mm-hmm. just shows yeah. that people are having very unspiritual, very disconnected kind of sex that we know, because you hear it as much as what I do, that they are focused mostly on penetrative intercourse where women don't get a lot of satisfaction and men are wanting stuff that they fantasize about. And you know as well that that's a lot about anal sex and oral sex. Mm -hmm. They were not interested in having kinky sex or a huge amount of variety. So the kind of sex that they're looking for is what one would really define as being very intimate kind of sex. Now, it's again crazy to imagine that you're wanting to have intimate sex with somebody who you hardly know. But there's the paradox, as we call it the paradox. The paradox is that this person that you think you don't know is actually somebody you know very, very well because of the hours and hours and hours that you've spent interacting with this person online. So you feel you know each other really well. So even if it's four days later, you've probably had more intimate disclosure with this person than you have with your own partner. And therefore, you're ready to have sex with them. You don't really negotiate a condom with them. That's what my my research shows. And you're actually able to ask for the kind of sex that you really do want to have. So Mm -hmm. the majority Mm -hmm. of people, are the men, are really interested in, in, in having receiving oral sex. Secondly, giving oral sex, which means that they're their wives or their partners don't really want that. Vaginal penetration comes really down the list. It's it's uh, it's about a fourth on the list of priorities for men. Uh, they're not really interested in that. But they do want a whole lot of, as I said, mutual masturbation, cuddling, and kissing. I mean, mm. that's really, yeah. really was for me a, a very surprising research result. Mm. Mm. Very interesting, really. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's uh, it's it's probably what they may not be getting in their relationships with their partner. Yeah, indeed, they're they're not getting that, and one would imagine that they would only want to go offline to have this really interesting kind of sex. But but they're not. Mm-hmm. They're just wanting regular kind of hugging and kissing and intimacy, as I say. So that was really surprising. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I sometimes hear from my clients uh, uh, is that, oh, they will say things like, oh, she won't understand, or no, I'm not going to impose that on her. Oh, I tried many years ago, but she said no. So, exactly. it, 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 yeah, so th- that's where the, the, the inhibitions come in, and then that's why they fantasize about things they cannot get. Absolutely so. And it's because of this, this belief that women are going to say no or the mixed messages that women do give to men, because I'm not blaming women at all, and that men then just back right off. 
they've just backed right off because they think I can rather ask that of a stranger than I can of somebody that I, I really live with. So having, having, having said all this about uh, how they take the online sex on, off-site and the kind of things that they want in the, uh, their hookups, uh, what, what, what can people who are in relationships do to prevent their partners from going off and seeking uh, excitement elsewhere? Nothing. I think we just got to accept that this is another form of relationship and add on, as I said earlier on, to what we're already doing, which is being married, but having some kind of technological fingerprint in a way or footmark. We can't avoid it and we can't prevent it. You can make yourself less vulnerable by practicing something called privacy rather than secrecy. It's a secret that makes people feel absolutely full of pain. When they discover the secret of nature of what you're doing online, whether it's viewing pornography or chatting with somebody else or chatting with on Facebook or tweeting to somebody which they would consider to be um, infidelity, you have to be able to create a contract and look at the new rules of relationship that now exist. The new rules that, that you and your partner as individuals have to create because society doesn't have them. They no longer are just the rules, the traditional rules of marriage, but it's defining in detail what would be acceptable for the two of you to do online. What do you define as cyber infidelity? What would be defined as cyber sex? Would it only be if you went offline and met this person? Would it be if you actually sent images of yourself? Would it be if you called them specific names, if you shared feelings, your dreams, your thoughts, your body? So couples have to really go into details around what are they wanting in terms of their sex tech contracts. Mm. Fantastic. You mentioned three things just now, uh, negotiating privacy and something yeah. else. And secrecy. Privacy, secrecy, and what's that? Just third? Pri privacy and secrecy. You have mm. to be able to negotiate the difference between the two because everybody's entitled to privacy. But secrecy is when you hold things back and you hold onto your phone, you don't let your partner have access to it and they become suspicious and then they find this, these chats. So privacy means that you agree that you're going to be having some flirting, but it's not going to do anything that's going to take you away and break your vows, whatever your vows are, so that the person that you are with in a significant in real life relationship is always going to feel as if they are still your number one and that they still hold enormous significance to you in your life. Yeah. So really what you're saying is having clear and conscious communication and going to talk about topics that can be sensitive, uh, but it's really important to talk about it. Absolutely. You, you really want to talk about your online behavior with each other. And people can read your book to really appreciate all the different shades really of uh, cyber <laughs> negotiation. And I really liked, uh, like I mentioned just now already, uh, the different lists that you have at the end of each chapter, really delving into the different thinking points that people can have. And um, these can be used as guidelines to then bring up this conversation with their partner. Absolutely. I would really want that, that this is just a a way, a teachable moment, if they're listening to your show right now, Martha, that they will say, let's talk about our online behavior and what do we define as cyber infidelity. And going through the book, with a lot of tick boxes, there are a lot of lists. It's a, it's a book which you can, it's a self-help guide where you can really determine for yourself and for your partner what you would define as cyber infidelity. So... What, what, is there anything, uh, uh, because we just have a few more minutes, is there anything else that you would like to talk uh, to listeners that, uh, you know, I haven't asked or we haven't covered so far on the show? Just to say that um, I am really going to be talking all over the world around cyber infidelity and this is a new form of relationship. I'd love your input from your listeners. Please engage with me on my Facebook page, uh, which is to be found on my site, marlenewasserman.com. Follow me on Twitter at Dr. Wasserman and just join the conversation of sex tech and cyber infidelity. That's the way that we learn. And by joining Facebook, you know, I have really interesting posts and topics every single day around different aspects of cyber infidelity and sex tech. So you'll learn a lot by coming online and seeing the conversations that I'm generating. Thank you so much for coming onto this show. 
It was such a pleasure. It was wonderful to be able to talk with a colleague so far away. <laughs> yeah, amazing. It is uh, technology is amazing. Uh, just as people are using technology to hook up, <laughs> we are using technology yeah. to talk about cyber infidelity. We were we hooked up for an hour, and that was great. And <laughs> we, were, we were faithful um, and true and ethical, and really hope that people, um, you know, join these conversations on my Facebook page. I really would welcome that. Yes. Fantastic. So globally, Marlini is creating conversations about cyber infidelity and the changing forms of intimate relationships. Buy her book, watch her video blogs and join her chat on Facebook and Twitter. And this will help keep you updated on your intimate life online. So go to doctor, so go to her website, MarliniWesserman.com. That's W-A-S-S-E-R-M-A-N.com. Next week, I have another guest and uh, I'm bringing back another uh, person uh, for the second time. His name is Lee Harrington and he'll be talking about gender, sexuality, orientation, energy, spirituality and we'll be focusing more on transgender issues. Uh, this is because uh, Lee Harrington uh, has spent a lot of time delving into these topics and I really loved it the last time he was here talking about BDSM and kink and so I've invited him to come back on to Arrow's Evolution. So this has been Dr. Martha Tara Lee and tune in to Arrow's Evolution next week. <laughs>